Hey everybody, welcome back to a vector statics worked example video. In this video, we'll walk through a planar particle equilibrium example. So this is the setup of the problem. We basically got a planar problem. There's a box, which is this hatched yellow rectangle, and it's being hoisted up by this green cable by way of cable ABC. Now the total length of cable ABC is two meters. The mass of the box is 500 kilograms, and this anchor point at point B is midway between points A and C. And then the actual problem statement states that cable ABC, again, this blue cable, that can only withstand a maximum tension of up to 3.2 kilonewtons, after which it'll break. And then the question asks, what is the maximum allowable width of the crate? Which kind of implies that there's some relationship between the width of the box and the amount of tension in the cable. Now before we just dive into these problems, it's always important to kind of think about what the question is asking and try and identify, in this case, what the key relationship is between the tension in the cable and the width of the box. Two things that may not seem immediately connected, but there is a relationship. So let's just think about this for a second. So in this hypothetical situation, let's suppose that the box basically has no width and that the two ends of cable ABC are basically just pulling straight down. Now in this case, let's just suppose that there's an upward force of 100 newtons. And because this is the same continuous cable, the tension on either side has to be the same. For the time being, we'll just call the unknown tension in the cable T. In our original free body diagram, we were calling this point B. So if we sum the forces acting at point B in the vertical direction, we should be able to solve for this unknown variable T. So we've got 100 newtons pulling upward in the positive direction, but you'll notice that we've got two ends of the cable, both of tension T, that are pulling downward in the negative y direction. So this is the sum of forces equation in the y direction. And at this point, we basically have boiled this problem down to one equation and one unknown, which makes it easy to solve for the tension in the cable. So now that we have this process in place for analyzing the tension in the cable, let's just do something a little bit different. So the only thing that changed here was this angle that went from 90 degrees to 45 degrees. So these cables are now pulling downward and outward. Now, even though the geometry changed slightly here, the math required to solve this problem is exactly the same. And if it's a little trickier to see now, we still have our 100 Newton force pointing straight up, and we've got two times T sine 45 pointing downward. Now the sine 45, of course, comes from the fact that these forces are no longer pointing straight down, and we're only looking at the vertical component of those forces. So let's just take this right-hand side of the tension. If we were to break that force down into its horizontal and vertical components, of course, we'd have one component that's horizontal, and one component that's vertical, like so. And because the angle is measured from this horizontal, that would make this vertical component the opposite side, which is why we use sine of 45. So to be absolutely clear, T sine 45 is actually this vertical component of the diagonal blue force. And there's two of them, which is why we're subtracting two T sine 45. So this is all of the forces in the vertical direction. And again, at this point, you just have to solve for the unknown variable T. So just thinking about this for a second, the trend seems to be the more horizontal or the more splayed out these two forces are, the larger the tension in the cable has to be to support the same 100 Newton force. Now, I don't wanna go overboard with examples here, but let's just take one last extreme case and we can kind of see the effect of what happens as we widen the gap between these two endpoints on this cable and see how it relates to the tension in the cable. So in this extreme case, the span between these two endpoints is getting really wide, which in our example sort of corresponds to a really wide box. But again, the way we've set up this math, it applies to any different geometry. We still have 100 newtons pulling up at point B, minus two T sine three. And in this sort of extreme case where the uh, cable ABC is almost just horizontal, we see this like massive jump in the amount of tension in that cable. Now again, we wanna sort of reflect on this and think about what's actually happening. So in all these examples, it was only the vertical component of the tension force that actually counteracted the 100 Newton force. And so as this angle gets shallower and shallower, the vertical component gets smaller and smaller with respect to the overall tension force. And because it's those two vertical components that still have to counterbalance that 100 Newton force, then the absolute magnitude in the tension has to keep increasing so that those two little vertical components can still balance that 100 Newton force. 
Now getting back to our original problem, you have to keep in mind that this cable here that we had originally called cable ABC, that's different from the cable that's hooked onto it pulling in the vertical direction. Now that force we'll just call it TB to differentiate from cable ABC, and the forces have to balance on the system as a whole as well. And so we're actually given the mass of the crate at the beginning of the problem, and because we know the acceleration due to gravity, we can actually just calculate the weight of the box. So the actual weight of the box is 4.9 kilonewtons. And because equilibrium has to be preserved on the entire system, we can do another quick force balance in the vertical direction, which tells us that the tension in the vertical cable must be 4.9 kilonewtons. Now this is always going to be the case regardless of how wide the box is, and this is only a function of how much the box weighs. Okay, so this is now what our problem boils down to. This here is our particle of interest, which again we're calling point B. And what I haven't drawn is the actual crate, but that sort of just goes here. And so again we're going to do the same math that we just did in the previous examples, only this time we have this unknown angle which we'll call alpha, which we're eventually going to relate to the width of the box. Okay, so just like before, we got to do our sum of forces in the y direction. Now we're not looking at 100 newtons pulling up, but rather 4.9 kilonewtons pulling in the upward direction. And in the downward direction, again, we've still got two vertical components, one that comes from each side of this cable. And just like before, the vertical component is just the tension in the cable multiplied by sine of that angle alpha. So this is what our equilibrium equation looks like now. And unfortunately, we've got three unknowns because we wrote it in this most general form where we differentiated the forces TAB versus TBC. But one thing we know about a cable is that the tension is the same in that cable everywhere along it. And one way to show that is simply to take forces in the x direction, which tells us that TBC cosine alpha, which is this horizontal component pointing to the right, minus TAB cosine alpha, which is this component pointing to the left, have to add up to zero. And so noting that this cosine appears in both terms, we can cancel those out, which essentially tells us that TBC is equal to TAB. So we're just gonna call it T as we've been doing before. This is just the full version without skipping any steps. So now we can revisit our sum of forces in the Y direction equation, and we can just plug in T for TAB and TBC, something a little bit simpler. Now this is still one equation that has two unknowns, but we were given some additional information at the beginning of the problem. We were told at one specific point, which is at the point of breakage of cable ABC, that the maximum tension in that cable could be no more than 3.2 kilonewtons. So essentially what we're trying to do is figure out the alpha, or the angle here, at that breakage point, and then we can relate that angle to the width that the box must be. So if we go ahead and solve for alpha in this equation, well that tells us that alpha has to be the arc sine, or the angle whose sine is 4.9 over two times 3.2, which is 6.4, which is equal to 49.96 degrees, or let's just call it 50 degrees to be conservative. So what this is actually saying is that if the angle alpha gets any less than 50 degrees, the tension in the cable will get so high that it snaps. Now the question wasn't actually asking about this angle alpha, but we can relate this critical angle that we found to the maximum width of the crate. So noting the geometry of our setup here, if this angle from the horizontal is 50 degrees, then that would make this opposite angle 50 degrees as well. We're also given that the cable length ABC has a total length of two meters, and that point B is halfway between A and C. So that would also mean that each length of cable is one meter. Now just using a little bit of trig, we can figure out half the width of the box by noting this right triangle here, which implies that half the width of the box is equal to one times cosine 50. Now again, we were asked for the maximum width of the box before cable ABC snaps which is equal to 1.28 meters. So again, if the box gets any wider than 1.28 meters, this angle up here, alpha, will drop below 50 degrees just due to the geometry, and we already found out that if this angle gets any less than 50 degrees, the tension in cable ABC will exceed the maximum 3.2 kilonewtons. So this is our final answer here, and we have answered the original question. Okay, so there you go. This is a planar particle equilibrium problem in two dimensions. Uh, it's based on a problem in the book, but like I said, I modified this one a little bit just to try and give you a little bit more insight into what's actually happening. If you have any conceptual 
technical or mathematical questions on this problem, feel free to drop them down in the comments. I'll do my best to get back to as many as possible. And then, of course, if you're a student here, just feel free to drop by office hours. We can chat about this problem in person. Thanks for watching, and thanks again for subscribing to our channel here at Cal Poly Pomona in the Department of Mechanical Engineering, and we'll see you next time.